you. Good evening. Welcome to the Wingham Conservation Commission meeting of Wednesday, August 3rd, 2022. We have present Denise, you want to start? Denise Schultz. Mike Mercer. Agent Dave Pichette. Sandy Slavin. Nicole Accardo. Thank you. We have minutes from June 15, 2022. Thank you, Carol. I've read them. I find them to complete. We were all here. Motion to accept the minutes from June 15, 2022. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? They are approved 500. The first hearing, please. Notice of public hearing pursuant to the provisions of the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act, General Laws Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Wareham Wetland Protection Bylaw Division 6. A public hearing will be held in Room 320, Wareham Multi-Service Center, 48 Marion Road, Wareham, Massachusetts, on Wednesday, August 3rd, 2022, at 6.30 p.m. On the request for determination of applicability for Carol C. Bender, Care of JC Engineering Inc., 2854 Cranberry Highway, East Wareham, Massachusetts, 02538, to upgrade a septic system located on Assessor's Map 9, Lot 82, 63 Onset Avenue, Wareham, Massachusetts. Thank you. And who's here representing this project? Good evening, Robert Holmes, the engineer. Thank you, Mr. Bichette. We'll read to the project. Um, so this project site is at 63 Onset Ave, and the project involves upgrading a septic system within a coastal flood zone. An existing septic system is to be upgraded with a new Title V septic system within flood zone AE elevation 15. Um, this will be a pump system. The septic tank and pump chamber would be installed within the flood zone, zone AE elevation 15. Um, the new leach field would be outside the buffer zone to wetlands and outside the flood zone as well, um, close up to the road in the furthest location possible from any resource areas. Um, hay bales would be installed between the work and the wetland, so I would recommend the approval of the project with a negative determination number two. Brad, anything to add? No, that sums it up perfectly. Questions on the board? I'll start with Denise. I just want to say thank you for having everything staked, staked out. out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but no questions. Michael. Uh, no questions. Thank you. Carol. No questions. Nicole. No questions. I have none. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to comment on this project? I'm seeing none. Uh, motion to accept the, uh, the project. I'd like to close the hearing. Uh, close it first. Uh, motion to close the hearing. Second. I have a motion to close the hearing and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Five zero zero. Now, Michael. Motion to accept the project. With a, with a with negative stand. two. Negative well, open the negative determination number two. I'm sorry. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Opposed? Abstained? Did I hear a vote, or oh, did yes. I just jump over it? <laughs> <laughs> you kind of jumped over us, but yes. <laughs> Uh, no work until you get your paperwork from Mr. Bichette, please. Yeah, thank you. you. Give us a second to catch up with the paperwork. I'll take the plan. Plan. Okay, Denise, I guess you can read the next one. Notice of public hearing pursuant to the provisions of the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act, General Laws Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Wareham Wetland Protection Bylaw, Division 6. A public hearing will be held in Room 320, Wareham Multi-Service Center, 48 Marion Road, Wareham, Massachusetts, on Wednesday, August 3rd, 2022, at 6.30 p.m. On request for determination of applicability for Peter Stevens, care of JC Engineering, Inc., 2854 Cranberry Highway, East Wareham, Massachusetts, 02538, to construct an addition and a patio located on access Assessor's Map 40, Lot 9, 7 Stillman Memorial Drive, Wareham. 
Massachusetts. And, thank you. And who's here representing the project? Good evening, Brad Bertolo, JC Engineering. Thank you, Mr. Bichette. We'll read to the project. Um, so the project site is at 7 Stillman Memorial Drive, and the project involves the demolition of an existing deck and the construction of a sunroom addition in paver patio within flood zone AE elevation 14. Um, an existing deck is to be removed, and a 14 by 25 foot sunroom addition is proposed in the same general location. Also proposed is a paver patio as indicated in the red cross hatched area on the plan. Uh, much of this work is over an existing concrete patio. The work is not in the buffer zone to any other wetland resource areas. Um, there's no grade changes proposed, so I would recommend the approval of this project as well with a negative determination number two. Brad, anything to add? Uh, no, thank you. Questions, Denise? No questions. Michael? No questions. Carol? No questions. Nicole? No questions. I have done. Is there anybody here who'd like to comment on this project? I see none. Motion to close the hearing. Motion. Second. And a second to close the hearing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Five zero zero. Right. Motion to accept the project with a negative determination number two. Thank you. I have a You're motion. Welcome. Second. <laughs> and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Zero. Thank you. Um, I was very impressed with the motorcycle. Oh, were you? Oh, you just uh, <laughs> class. Okie dokie. Thanks again. Uh, we have continued hearings. Um, I know that I've been asked to bring uh, Wareham MA3 up early, but we only have two short hearings. One is Scott Green, who wishes a continuance. Is there anybody here for that project? If not, I'll take a motion to continue until the 17th. 8-17. Motion continue till 8-17. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Green is continued until 8-17. The next hearing is Paula Hamilton. Is there anybody here for that project? I believe we were waiting for... Uh, wait a second. We were getting a new plan with the shed totally out of the 30 foot. Is that what we were waiting for? Yes. And who's here representing this project? Brian Grady with GAF Engineering. This is what, third version? No, this is the same one we had last time. Oh, we we haven't seen a new. We haven't seen the new one? Or didn't we ask for that shed to be moved? We did. No new plans? Well. No, no new plans. Uh, I guess the options are, uh, there's really no other place on the property to put that outside the 30 feet. The only place would be up against the street line uh, kind of where we're showing the dewatering basin. And to do that would require a variance from the Board of Appeals. You can't have accessory structures in front of the building. This couldn't be moved back a little further toward the septic? Yeah. Possibly uh, we could move it to the tank. I don't want to put it over the tank. Um, I, I'm sorry, I went out of line. Mr. Bichette needs to read to the project. I was hoping that we could. Well, but certainly. without this, okay. All right. Um, yeah, so the project site is at 44 Agawam Beach Road, and the project involves upgrading a septic system in the buffer zone to a coastal bank and a coastal beach. And this is also within a coastal flood zone. 
Um, the existing system is to be replaced with a new Title V nitrogen reducing system, um, approximately 50 feet from the seawall and 85 feet from the edge of the marsh. So as we talked about at the last meeting, there's a shed in the location where the new leach field is proposed that would have to be relocated. Um, there doesn't seem to be a spot on the site so far that we've seen that the shed could be moved to and be outside the 30 foot no activity zone. So we had asked at the last meeting for a revised plan to show that, or if that can't be done, then the shed would need to be removed. Um, the shed, after looking into this, I find from the building inspector never got any kind of approval to be there in the first place. Um, so that's where we stand with regards to the shed. We did get a DEP file number for the project. Um, so I would recommend the approval of the septic system upgrade, but the removal of the shed if it can't be placed outside the 30 foot no activity zone on the site. Brian? Anything, anything to add? I mean, yeah, I had a brief. It never, never permitted. I'm sorry. It was never permitted. He just put it in there. Well, her memory is that it was permitted. It is on concrete sono tubes. It is anchored as would be required in the flood okay, zone. So but the paperwork, she just can't find the paperwork. But Miss Hamilton's memory is that she did get it permitted. Okay. Um, the building inspector doesn't have any record. Yeah. So. So I, I can't speak to that other than that. Um, but it certainly, as the site exists now, it can fit on the site in accordance with all setback requirements and anchoring and all of that. Um, I had a brief discussion with Dave earlier today. Uh, we're left with a couple options, I guess. Um, removing the shed from the site uh, because we can't find any place in conformance with the zoning or to be outside the 30 foot uh, no disturb area. Um, I don't think that's what your 30 foot no disturb bylaw was intended to do because what that will do is, you know, I mean, you know what sheds are used for lawnmowers, a gallon or two of gasoline, maybe some oils, maybe some garden chemicals. Those won't have a home now. So those will have to go under the deck, overhead deck covered with a tarp. I don't think that's the best option for the site. I do think this is approvable under your bylaw, which speaks to when there's a project with an overall benefit, it gives you some discretion. So Ms. Hamilton's making a significant investment with upgrading her septic system at this location. Um, due to the site conditions, it's not gonna be a cheap investment at all. But that upgrade to that system necessitates moving this shed. So I don't think that that feature should be lost because she's making an investment to upgrade the septic system and improve the environment, uh, number one. Number two, uh, items as I just mentioned, lawnmowers, gallon or two of gasoline, other uh, Wheelbarrows, other such things will just be placed either under the deck, under the deck, uh, under a tarp, or somewhere else. Uh, and I don't think outside storage of features such as that are maybe the best environmental options for this site. So I do think there's some latitude under the bylaw where the commission could allow this to stay, whether it's inside the 30 feet by a little bit. Um, I know you've all been to the site, but here's, we've got some pictures of the location of where it would be. Um, as we're showing it on the plan, it's up as close to the house as it can be. Um, it's on uh, behind the existing deck and it's in a lawn area. So uh, let me show you those pictures. Okay. While well, he's passing those out, Denise, any questions? Uh, I any think comments? that this is, uh, it's not permitted the shed or the cement slab that it's on, is that correct? Well, it's on sauna tubes. Sauna tubes. Yeah. But neither were approved by anybody or permitted. Um, and this commission needs to stay consistent with what it does. And we don't allow things in the 30 foot no activity zone, especially not permitted things. 
Michael. I, I just can't imagine it's only like a, a few feet that can't be moved over and you're out of the zone. I, I just have a hard time believing that. It just, just, just the way it looks on this graph. But yeah. that, that's, that's just my opinion. Well, if we can find that spot, we will certainly do that. We have to meet the setbacks. Um, uh, Dave went to the site and he believes that that corner, uh, there are some resource areas a little closer than shown on the plan. Our existing conditions for this plan came from the reconstruction of, this, of the wall. Um, so I don't know if the construction of the wall affected conditions which moved resource areas. Um, so uh, the, so that's, that's that point. And if we could uh, meet at site and if the 30 feet can be met, we will certainly do that, not a problem. Um, I, I guess that would involve uh, meeting David at site, concert, uh, confirming where the re adjusted resource areas would be, uh, and seeing if there's any other alternative. Michael, anything else? No, that, that, that's all. Carol? No questions at this time. Nicole? No questions. What's the size of the existing shed? Do you remember? It's 96 square feet. Any eight, chance? Eight by 12. Eight by 12. Any chance of a smaller shed that would fit inside the 30 foot and still handle the miscellaneous things that I don't want stored underneath the deck? It's possible to get a smaller shed. Uh, 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 they, trying to reuse the shed that they have is all we're looking to do. She's going yep. through ex significant expenditure upgrading the septic. Yes, so I, yep, you've I'm said sure that. you know the costs of sheds under the current climate. Yeah. But that would be an option to explore. But in the meantime, you and Dave could meet on the site and see if there's any way of wiggling it in a few feet from if, the 30 If Dave's foot. willing to do that, we can certainly do that. Okay. okay. It looks on the plan like that shed could be moved over just a few feet and be out of the no activity zone. Well, one of the issues is when I was there before, I think the 30 foot line is not accurate. I think that's further in than what that plan represents. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is there anybody here that, to speak to this project? If not, I'll ask for a continuance for an on site meeting. I see none. Move to continue to eight. 17. 17. Yes. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero zero. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okie dokie. Hearing that continued need, the next hearing. Can I put it in my folder? Oh, you can have it. Okay. Is Wareham MA3 LLC. Is there anybody here representing this particular project? Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Joe Shanahan, uh, thank, de thank you. project developer for Con Edison Clean Energy Businesses. And you have Nick again. And we have Nick Cleaney from Atlantic Design Group also. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bichette will read to the project. New plan? This is a revised plan. Revised yeah, this is plan. a smaller version. Yeah, you, you want, want a smaller that. version? It's different from what they gave us at the site. Is Neil Price here? No, oh, that thank you. Revision date. Okay. Would be, yeah, this, is the, this is the original. I see one. I have May 17, 2021. July 18th. Nope, that's a different one. Madam Chairperson, may I just inquire with Mr. Pushat? Are we all looking at the latest revised plan, David, July 26th? 
Yes. Thank you. Yep. Um, so the project site is at 91 and 101 Faring Hill Road, and the project involves the construction of a commercial solar array in the buffer zone to bordering vegetated wetland. Um, a 20-acre solar project with battery storage component is proposed at the site. Um, we've been discussing this for a couple of meetings now, and at the last meeting, the commission had asked for um, the consultant who did the hydrogeologist study to um, come in to answer questions relative to that presentation that was made um, on that study. Uh, we were also waiting for some final comments from the town's consulting engineer on this project. I know we have a new plan, and there was a comment response letter made to him on his other comment letter, but I don't know that he's made a response comment letter to date on I that. Think, I think you're current. That's yeah. the status. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, at this stage, I think I would like to just hear some updates on the plan changes that were made, because some of the plan changes that were made by Horsley Witten and by uh, the town's engineer resulted in this revised plan that we have, which does show some modifications to the, the uh, detention basins and some other features. Um, so let's get into that part of it at this point. But at the end of all this, I will recommend a continuance to get the final comments from um, Charlie Rowley and to have a chance to review all of this new information um, prior to making a decision. So that's yeah. where we are. If I may, thank you, Mr. Pochette. Madam Chairperson, may I? Yes. Yeah, just as an overview, uh, as Mr. Pochette indicated two weeks ago, uh, this commission had been waiting for some time for the report from the hydrogeologist Hosley Witten Group, and particularly Neil Price, who is here this evening. Uh, also, you were waiting for responses uh, with regard to the town engineer's comments. I would represent to the commission as of last Thursday when these revised plans, revised calculations, and revised narrative were submitted to this commission, the planning board, and to Mr. Rowley. At this point, I believe we have addressed all of Mr. Rowley's current comments, all of Mr. Price's current comments, and we have incorporated Mr. Rowley's recommendations and Mr. Price's recommendations in the narrative, the calculations, and the revised plan. Uh, as Mr. Pichette indicated, uh, it's understandable that you want to wait to hear from Mr. Rowley upon his review of the revised plan, and we too are waiting for a review and sign off by Mr. Price. Uh, I might ask Mr. Cleaney at this point to take a couple of minutes to address the bigger revisions to the plan, and then we can proceed. Okay. You okay with that? Okay. We get the plan. And after that, I would like to have uh, Mr. Price come talk to us about his conclusions and recommendations from his report. Yeah, I understand that okay. was the principal reason for yes. this meeting this mm -hmm. evening. So I would caution Mr. Cleaney to be brief. <laughs> you need a microphone. reach it might there, there you, you go. go thank you okay um, so based off of mr. Charlie's uh, Charlie Rowley's comments um, I'll start with basin one this actually applies to all three basins basin one is up here on the top it's the larger of the three um, he had asked for uh, gravel trenches to be placed at the base of the inside of the basin, the bottom of the slopes, so that anything coming in or flowing down into that basin would have direction and channels to flow towards those um, outlet pipes at each, <coughs> excuse me, at each basin. We've actually included that in, on all three basins. We have a trench on the inside on both sides, here and here, as well as continuation from the gravel swale that was on the western side of the property all the way down to that pipe. 
we had a gravel swale on the southern side going all the way down to the outlet pipe as well. Um, we had a question about the diversion swale that has been added through the middle of it, where we have actually gone through and calculated not only the swale itself holding, but we also have a gravel trench that goes underneath that swale with a pipe. That's to take some water from this side and redirect it to the other side away from the abutters. That pipe, is, pipe and swell has been calculated to account for the 100 year flow. We have added riprap, uh, I guess level spreaders to the end of that on the swale and I should say riprap aprons to the end of the swale and the end of the pipe where the pipe daylights into basin three. And for those that can't see it, this is the eastern side of the uh, project, correct? Correct. Thank you. For those that can't see what you're looking at. Sure, yes. Um, the swale actually ends about halfway through the right portion on the southern half of the array. Um, and this is actually directed again towards the wetlands on the eastern side. That swale stops there, goes through the riprap, and the pipe continues down into the basin. So I know there were some con concerns as to how that pipe and swale daylighted and ended. So just to clarify that again, the pipe daylights into the basin so that there's no overland flow from the pipe. So that, by, that pipe <coughs> will go into the? Basin three. Which is the one on the east? Southeastern south side. Southeast component. Correct. Okay. That swale also crosses the road. Um, we have had actually conversation with Neil, uh, Neil Price of Horsley Witten, and we are going to make one adjustment to that side. The swale actually right now doesn't cross the road, so what we're going to try and propose is a way to cross that swale at the road so that water can continue underneath. And that road is Faring Hill? Sorry, no, the access road through the middle of the Thank site. You. I mean, you keep Clarification. saying too many roads. I know. I got confused. Okay. <laughs> To the access road. Correct. Um, so we are working up a way to make that adjustment right now to uh, provide safety for vehicles getting across and maintain the water to go through. Um, we've actually reduced the size of the site overall as well. It's gone down about 24% from what we had originally. Um, that's to maintain more of a site distance between or a buffer at least between the abutting property which is the DeMello property. We've also removed some panels on both eastern side basins, basin one and basin three, where the high elevation of water would be so that there's no panels within the water area. So we've pulled that back again. Um, we also pulled back on the western side by basin two, um, where the road is no longer going, excuse me, the access way, vegetated access way is no longer going on top of the basin. That's actually outside the waterway. So it's above where the high water mark would be. And it's pulled back panels again as well. Um, is there anything else you can think of? I think that's about it. Can I ask Try to be quick, as quick as possible. Quick, quick question on, on the basins. What storm event are those designed to contain before they, in other words, what volume would be retained in there before they start to overflow? I believe basin one and two hold the 100 year, and there's a small amount, very small amount in basin three that actually goes over the emergency spillway. But that design point actually is still under what the pre-development was. So to make that, to clarify that, before any of the site is cleared, the trees are cut down and anything is done on the site, there's a certain flow that comes off of this property. We have maintained that flow to what this portion is, which is the wetlands. So any water that is going there now as it sits currently without any clearing, we've maintained or decreased that volume based on creating these basins. Does that make sense? So we don't have as much flow into the wetlands of the conservation land. Correct. It will be held in the basin number one. One and three. One and three. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? before we have um well the other question i guess i would have on that note is is that's assuming weather conditions are such that there could be some amount of infiltration or is that not including infiltration at all no infiltration at all 
So even if the ground was frozen, you're saying it would still retain that? Correct. Okay. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. I think that it's. Um, Neil, we've asked you to come before us to talk about the plan you had presented to the planning board. I would like you to focus on your conclusions and recommendations. May we step back? Madam yes, Chair please. I'd, I'd like to have him have the microphone. Hang on to it. Please identify yourself for the record. Good evening, uh, members of the commission. I'm Neil Price from the Horsey Witten Group. Thank you. A lot of work and time into that. A lot of work and time, yes. Um, let me, before we get into the, um, the hydrogeologic report, let me just clarify a couple of things coming out of what I, what I just heard. So there are, as, as Nick did mention, he mentioned one of the um, design changes we had requested from the current version of the plans that, that you're looking at. And there's a couple of other small details that are not entirely consistent that need to be resolved. And there's actually one other, um, not significant, but one other design change that's needed to meet our, our recommendations. So we, I do expect there to be one more version of, uh, of the plans and submittals to be submitted and a final comment letter coming from Horsey Witten to that I've already written up to today, but will I'm waiting to submit it until this final set of plans comes in and then it will be a complete final comment letter addressing everything to date. And I expect Mr. Rowley will also want to uh, see these most recent plans to come and comment one more time on, on those. So there's, just to let, let you know, there is a little, there's a, another step to, to the uh, process to be had. Okay. Um, I, w I have a question. I had uh, Mr. Buckland from the planning board told me that he was going to send my PowerPoint presentation to whoever runs the AV here so that it would be available in case you guys had questions that required visual aids. Did that happen? Did we, ha did we get it? I didn't. I wasn't involved with that particular conversation. So, so we do not have that. We okay. do not have it. So hopefully your questions um, do not require visual aids. Well, <laughs> we all did receive your multi-page report. Yes. So we had it available. And honestly, it didn't take me long to get lost in it. Yeah. Which is why I went to the conclusions and recommendations. By any chance, did any of you hear my presentation to the planning board several weeks ago? I did. Okay, yeah, so I, I heard most of it. Yeah. So that hopefully that helps some. So what? I don't. Would you like me to start with any kind of a recap, or should we just get into questions that well, you might still have? Would you like the recap? I would like I would, a recap. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I guess you got a recap. Okay. Let me. I'll try to be brief. Um, so our goal, as instructed by the planning board, was not, um, and I want to be clear about this. We're not doing a typical peer review for regulatory purposes of stormwater standards, et cetera. That's that's Mr. Rowley's um, uh, role, and I don't know if you have a different peer review consultant than Mr. Rowley. No. Okay. So that's Mr. Rowley's role. Our role was to specifically address the water hydrology and hydrogeology related concerns with the project resulting from the change in land use from forest to solar panels and meadow. Um, so we, we really focused on, on that. So with that, there are, you'll notice some of our recommendations were about the stormwater treatment system, et cetera. So there, are, there is some crossover there. But I just want to make clear that by no means will we try to look at every single requirement from the state stormwater standards or Wareham's bylaw and make sure that every, every box was ticked and et cetera. So we, we were really focusing on would the groundwater rise anywhere as a result of this change in land use to the detriment of neighbors? And would the surface runoff, the stormwater runoff, be increased anywhere to the detriment of neighbors or resources? So those were the the two focus areas, and we approach those two uh, goals from entirely different directions, entirely different analyses, entirely different models, and we actually, in order to be conservative on both of those assessments, we used assumptions that are contradictory to each other. So the, <laughs> so the conservative assumptions that make groundwater mounding appear the worst 
are the opposite of the conservative assumptions that make stormwater runoff appear the worst. So we, we assume two sets of things that can't possibly happen in reality. So I, the reason I'm saying that is should give us all a little bit of confidence that there is some conservatism built into this in many, in many layers of conservatism um, that I feel very good about that when, when, you, when you do this multi-layered approach and come to consistent conclusions that, that make sense, I, I, feel, I feel good about that. So um, the, and by the way, feel free to interrupt me at any point on this if you have a specific question. I did have a quick comment yeah. just to start with in terms of your focus points, which from your description doesn't really address stormwater going towards the conservation property. It, it really does. focuses on the stormwater going towards the homes. Correct. And so we are looking at both issues, yes. um, not just how this might impact the home. So, you know, I have a significant concern with this because a significant chunk of this property slopes towards the, the conservation property. Right. And so... You, you're referring to the, the wetlands buffering the Wuiantic on the east yes. side, right? Yeah. Okay. Right. Next to Basin three, next, yeah. next to Basin well, 1. 3 and 1, really. Yeah. It's kind of all in that. Because I believe the railroad grade on the west side is actually a, a designated resource area as well. Right. right. Yeah. yeah, I'm talking about towards the... What I call the conservation land is the town-owned Faring Hill conservation yes. property. Yep. Um, so just want to throw that out there that to me there's some information that's not included in your report relative to that issue right okay so I can that's certainly true I can speak a little bit about about that now and it, it can be kind of teased out of the analysis that we did um, so from my opinion the impacts to the wetland would be about stormwater runoff so are you going to be generating erosion on the uplands and the buffer areas heading towards those wetlands or not. So that, that's where the whole stormwater design comes in. And we Right, that and just the volume as well, because currently the way things exist right now during certain events, you have um, flooding and erosion on where the stream comes under the access road to get into the town property. Right, right. And so any increase in volume that's going to result from this project onto that land, to me, is going to have an adverse impact right. okay. on that site. Un yeah, understandable. Um, so this is where, you know, and again, this is really Mr. Rowley's um, primary focus, but I will say that we're, we, of course, looked at, at this to some extent, right? And so the, the modeling of the uh, design system uh, does shows as as Nick mentioned earlier shows especially the revised with the, with the revisions that have been done does not show an increase in either volume or rate of peak discharge to any of the design points me meeting that part of of the standard so from a regulatory standpoint anyway I, I think that is met or will soon be met with the revised the further to be revised plans coming to ensure that this thing is managed and I and I also want to add that we have included recommendations in both the report you read and, and the letter that's going to be written for there to be monitoring during construction, post-construction, and for some period of time to be determined afterwards, which is critical to make sure that all of this stormwater control measures actually function, at, are built properly, and then function as designed. So we want, if there is erosion going, we're gonna recommend that there be conditions in the permit that they need to be corrected. Uh, so that uh, those conditions aren't, aren't occurring uh, long term. So in terms of the volume, let's say the volume is the same for the sake of this argument, mm -hmm. but instead of it being spread across multiple acres, it's now going to discharge at two points mm -hmm. where these basins occur. Yep. So that could definitely have a, a significant difference between what currently happens there versus what's proposed, even if the volume is the same. Right. To me, I would be concerned primarily with erosion, with that, with the focusing, and, and that again can be, can and should be addressed in the stormwater management system. I'm interested to hear, like, I think you're thinking of, of something else. So are there, maybe are you getting out of there portions of the wetland 
that might be more or less water starved because of the distribution of, w of where that runoff is occurring. Right, how the whole system functions currently is gonna, is gonna change in terms of the water flow. Right. So that could impact downstream areas, it could impact areas closer to the project. You know, we don't know the answer to that is I guess the issue. Yeah. Certainly everything um, at the down gradient end of those wetlands, so as, as they're heading south crossing Fearing Hill Road or heading towards the Wee Wee Antic River should be, un I mean, that's the big picture, right? So that, that should be unchanged. But I will, we did not look at is if further up in the wetland system, you know, above where all of the stormwater management is discharging, what that means. I, that, I mean, that's something we could, we could look at. We could ask Atlantic to look at in the modeling. Um, I, I really don't know if um, that's an issue or, or not an issue. We just okay. to honest, didn't look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I will carry on. So, anything else before he continues? Mm, not at this point. I'll wait till this carries. Yeah. <laughs> um, is there a preference to should I stick with the stormwater runoff side and then do the groundwater mounding side or? Sure. Carry okay. on that way. Yeah. Okay. So um, we obtained, as you know, from many projects that have come before you and that you've reviewed. Stormwater management is always modeled using HydroCAD as the, the modeling software. So we obtained the model that Atlantic had made initially for their original design and we made some changes to it that we thought would better reflect both the existing conditions and the proposed conditions. Um, those changes were accepted by Atlantic and the applicant and, and, and put into the the revised plans that, that you have there and um, and that we, so we have sort of identical models, um, at least right now, in terms of how this works. So we, again, we're looking at these design points, um, heading towards, on the west, heading towards the railroad grade, and on the east, heading towards the wetlands on the Wee Wee Antic River. Um, and we did find issues with, um, with the initial submittal where there was too much water um, being generated and volumetrically um, and rate-wise, and that's those these set of revisions have corrected that so that they are now in balance. That pre and post discharge, um, that post discharge is not modeled to increase existing discharge uh, for both rate and volume. Um, so there's that and. I will say that you know we were again we're primarily focused with impacts to properties. So we were we were looking, although we made sure that the modeling all balanced, we were really looking at that west side on the railroad grade because that's the sensitive area. There's there's a lot of low properties right around there. The railroad grade has one single culvert crossing Faring Hill Road. So any any water that gets into that has only one way to continue on its on its journey south. Um, so that that's, was the primary concern. And as, as a result of the recommendations that we made, they uh, pulled the detention basin on that side further uphill, so backed it away from that railroad grade in the properties. They increased the size of it, and they added this diversion swale that Nick was discussing earlier to convey some of the runoff generated from the west side of the hill and wrap it around and bring it over to the east side of the hill where there are fewer um, residents and potential sensitive receptors and the site can more readily handle that. So that's, um, with that, those, those address, those changes address our concerns with stormwater runoff. And again, and I wanna, I said this in the presentation, I'll reiterate, this area has water issues currently and this project is not going to make them better, at least not significantly better, but, but it will not make them significantly worse either. So that's, that's where we're, we're at on the, the stormwater side there. Um, questions before I go to groundwater? Okay. I'm trying to put a picture in my head. I think about a roof on a house with or without a gutter. Mm -hmm. So what we have now is a roof with no gutter, which means the water flows all off equally regardless of 
what part of the house is on. Mm -hmm. What they're proposing is that we will put a gutter and put our water into three swales. Correct. Three well, swales and detention water basins. retention. Yeah. Water retention basins. I mean, that's the picture I'm trying to get, and I think that's what you're trying to get to, is that right now it flows down the hill toward Faring property, the wetlands, equally across coming down from 90 feet down to something, what, 30? What's the bottom? 55? I mean, that's, that's the tip of the hill is 90 feet, and then it goes down to 55, and then mm -hmm. it goes into the wetlands, which goes into the Wee Wee Attic. And, yep. Yep. And I'm just trying to put a picture in my head. Yeah, I mean that's a fairly accurate picture. I mean that's the 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 real the situation here. And I guess I should have mentioned this at the first is the you know the conversion of the site from forest to solar panels and meadow is a net change in how the water cycle works there. Mm -hmm. Right. So the forest is really good at evapotranspiration. So you know the, the trees are uh, taking that water from the near surface soils and taking them up into the air and evaporating it, that is not as good. So even though, even though greater than 50% of the site will be meadow after the fact, it's not as effective of a water user as forest is. So there's a, a net increase in the total amount of water that that's is- That's gonna flow down. That's gonna flow. So that, that's where the stormwater management comes in to try to replicate, to you know, slow that down in a way that it is not creating more volume or more rate of, of flow than under existing conditions. So it's, it's not the same, but it's, it's per, per the standard of how all developments are analyzed and permitted in Massachusetts and most of the country for that matter. That's, that's how these things get looked at. Right? There's gotta be a way to mathematically look at them and this is, this is the way they're looked at. And I heard a little hint. What happens in the winter when the ground freezes? Everything just runs right off? If, it, if they get a rainstorm with the ground frozen before snow, then well, it's all, all the, run off. So it, that's good that, that you mentioned that. So the, I talked about these conservative assumptions, right? So one of the conservative assumptions on the runoff side is that there's no infiltration. So all of the math that was done on the stormwater runoff assumes no infiltration. So that is, that would be the situation. If, it, if the ground was frozen, there's no infiltration. That's how the modeling was, was done. Okay. And on the new um, plan, the one that takes stormwater from the one side where the original plan didn't really do that and now is shifting it to the side where the, the, wet, the conservation property is, is that new calculation been done to still indicate that there's not gonna be any additional runoff? Correct. I, mean, I, I should ask, you know, Nick to. I, I believe so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. right. Yeah. We 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 do. You know, Nick mentioned one. We have some issues. We have two two issues to resolve. One being how that that diversion swale crosses the road to make sure that the water actually gets across the road and isn't doesn't hit the road and get short circuited yeah. down it. Bering Hill Road. No, I'm sorry. The access road. Access. Thank <laughs> Once again. <laughs> Right, so okay. the access road kind of runs up the, the crest of the ridge there and then it comes down to Faring Hill Road. But that's our, and the, the second concern is the remainder of that access road. Um, it was uh, under Mr. Rowley's recommendation, the bottom part of it was switched to be pavement because of the, the grade that it's at, which is a, a fine recommendation. But it got us thinking about runoff being generated from that lower portion of the access road and currently it looks like there's a small, it's not a, not a lot of impervious area, but there's a small area that looks like it will not drain to the, any of the three detention basins. So we've asked Atlantic to, to look at that and come up with a plan to handle the runoff from this small area at, at the bottom of the access road to make sure that is also managed and doesn't lead to an increase in runoff towards Faring Hill Road. So the access road has no retention around it. So it will either fall over it into the basketball court or it will roll down onto Faring Hill Road. Correct. Did I read that? Yep. For the very lower, the lower part of it. The, the upper part should, will shed off to the sides and, and go you know, through the meadows and into the various stormwater structures. But the lower part looks like it, it as currently designed will be conveyed to Faring Hill Road. Okay. 
my questions. Okay, so then groundwater, right? So this, um, and I apologize in advance because if you thought that was complicated, this is going to be <laughs> <laughs> quite a bit more so. <laughs> Primarily because, you know, you as a board, you, you see stormwater plans all the time. You review them. It's, it's a little more familiar to you. This groundwater mounting stuff is probably a little bit foreign. Um, so the, the excess water generated off the site is conveyed to the stormwater detention basins. So back again to these opposing conservative assumptions. I told you how we assumed no infiltration for the purpose of stormwater runoff. For the purposes of groundwater mounding, we assumed lots of infiltration. Right, so everything soaks in. Everything soaks in, okay. and when it soaks in, it soaks into the ground, and the water that goes into the ground rises as the groundwater rises as a result of this excess water that's going into the ground under the detention basins. Plus, isn't there not a lot of stone or glacial layers that prevent the water from really soaking in, but it stops it and keeps in. Well, it the, yeah, the materials, down all the, way. the geology there is fairly compact, um, low permeability. We call it so till. it doesn't soak in a lot. It rises. Yeah, okay. so this is, a, this is, again, this is a conser excessively conservative assumption to have this much infiltration there. But it's, you know, we're trying to be safe about this. So that's why we're, we, we took these, these routes, right? So, um, but the groundwater, you know, goes, goes down below the detention basins in conceptually. Um, and that causes the groundwater underneath the detention basin to rise up in what we call a mound, you know, because essentially it's, it's trying to get away to the side, but because, as you mentioned, the soil is fairly restrictive, it can't get away fast enough to um, account for how quickly it's coming down from the top. So you, that's why you take a, if you imagine a flat water table beforehand, you put all this water in the detention basins, and the water table becomes this bell-shaped you know, a three-dimensional bell-shaped mound that then is flowing off in all directions. So we assess this process two ways. One, using a numerical groundwater model, ModFlow. It's a computer program that's really incredibly complicated, and I'm not going to try to explain the details of it, other than to say it's the industry, academic, and government standard for assessing. Like, if you're going to if you're going to install a new drinking water well in a municipality, you use ModFlow to model how you know where that water is going to come from. If you're going to build a sewer plant, you use ModFlow to figure out the impacts of that of that sewer discharge. It's 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 the tool that's used, and it does a lot of very complicated math for you in three dimensions. So we built a groundwater model of the site to simulate this change, and got a, a fairly small, at the distances of all these neighboring houses, we got a fairly small increase in groundwater level under average. And it, so I'm backing up again, the groundwater model simulates what we call steady state conditions, which means long-term average. So essentially it's, you know, we're in a drought now. Some years we get a lot of rain. Um, so the groundwater level varies depending on all that, but if you, if you look at 50 years of data, there is some average that, that is there. So, it's a, so those are the conditions that we model, this long-term average uh, groundwater conditions. And when you, when you look at those, and, you, and then you add the storm, the, the, the change at the site for, um, for the water going into these detention basins, we got a, um, a maximum rise in groundwater level at the neighboring houses of about something less than an inch. Um, and for our purposes, we deem that to be, you know, a, within marginal to insignificant change. Um, other people might think differently, okay. but. An yeah. inch will ruin their carpet, four inches will ruin their furnace. Right. <laughs> I mean, just, okay, yeah. never mind. Yep. So then, on top of that, so then because I said this is long-term average, then we used a different, simpler model that the USGS devel developed for looking at stormwater impacts on groundwater. And this is just a spreadsheet. But we ran this spreadsheet to simulate, so you, you, you've, you raise the water level a little, long-term average, and then you, a big storm comes along, and you raise it more 
on top of that. So we used this second analysis to figure out the amount of storm, like storm specific short term uh, groundwater rise that would occur on top of the long term groundwater rise. And those numbers also came out to something less than an inch in general for most of the neighboring properties. So in total, you've got something less than two inches of cumulative groundwater rise predicted to occur even after some of these larger storm events uh, going forward. So again, and people can argue about how much is too much. In our opinion, that's within the, a margin of acceptable change um, that is not considered highly significant. So as a result of all this, we really, the, the stormwater stuff was our focus, which is why we made all these recommendations yep. to change the design plans to try to make sure that the stormwater stuff was working properly. And we're focusing on the flow of water off the site into the conservation's wetlands. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, Hit him. Yeah, so just a couple questions. Um, when you made your presentation to the planning board, there was some discussion about um, certain storm events that you didn't factor in, let's say, to some of your calculations. I think I heard you say something about the 100-year storm event you excluded. Is that correct? Am I? That was in, so, so this is, so not, from a stormwater standpoint, no. This 100-year storm event was looked at in, for stormwater runoff. So probably the hardest conceptual aspect of this project was figuring out how to quantify the, the change in hydrology resulting from this change in land use. So you go from trees to meadow, and we, as I've said, there's, we know that there's more water that's, that's coming out as a result of that, but how much water, right? So we spent a lot of time running through different methods to, to look at that. And ultimately, what we did is we looked at long-term data of how much it rains and the 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 part you're talking about with eliminating these big storm events was you know they don't happen for a hundred year storm event i mean it's on, on long-term average it's once every hundred years but you as we all know they you can have them more often than that but they're not they're not common enough to make a significant impact on this long the steady state long-term average condition that we were trying to do in the model so that's why we focus more on this, these hydrocad models that I was mentioning for the stormwater, they have pre and post conditions. So we were able to take those volumes, the difference in volume generated from all of the smaller storms, um, and figure out what that meant, and then look at how that, go, that plays into the long-term records of rainfall from Logan Airport, just because they have, they have a very good long-term record there, so you can see what the curve is for small events and long events and weight each of those appropriately to come up with the total volume that we thought would be, would be changed. Now, I will admit full on that I'm not 100% sure that this, we have this number dialed in perfectly and I don't think anyone could, but I think we looked at it in a lot of different ways and came up with something that's, that's fair. Um, and, and then when you build in all the conservatism that I was just talking about, I, I think we have a, a very good and safe analysis uh, for, for groundwater here. Okay, yeah, the, the reason I ask is because um, they may be more infrequent, but they're the ones that do the most significant right. damage. So, and but again, so, like this- And they happen more often th now yeah. than they used to. So I think- El Kentucky. Yeah, yeah exactly, right? Well, that, so I, the, the point, I guess the take home point of this is that the site is in, currently has real problems with water, especially during these big events, and it will continue to have so. Might they be a little worse on these big 100 year events? Possibly, but I think it's unlikely that they will be significantly worse as a, you know, based on this analysis, these analyses. Okay. Um, I had a couple, I think, general questions that I just wanted to clarify since we've had some plan changes. Can, can someone say what the actual total acres of forest to be cleared is now with, result, with regards to the project? Uh, it's 20.17 acres. Okay. And of the 44 acres. Right. 
And so, sorry, 21.7 acres. 21, clear. 20.17. 20.17. 20.17. 20 20 acres will be cleared out of the 44 acres of the property. Yes. Okay. Just to be clear, Mr. Bichette, as you refer to the plan, that's down. They can't hear you. Can't hear you. You have to come right. up to the mic. That 20 point something acres is down from the 26 acres that was originally proposed to be cleared. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then if someone could just speak quickly on the slopes on detention basin one for the most part and maybe on three, the proposed slopes are two to one roughly, that's fairly steep. And so I'm just curious how that's going to be stabilized to be kept in place because the slopes aren't as steep as that currently. Do you mean on the outside of the basins? Yes. So those are going to be riprap lined. You, you take riprap and you put them on the outside of it. That way there's no erosion or sand coming out. Okay. So not vegetated. It's going to be stone. Rock lined. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Um, I think that's what I have at the moment. Madam Chair, so. Okay. Denise, would you like to start? I guess I'm I would. I'm taking notes. I would <laughs> like to figure out how you came to the conclusion that a cumulative rise of two inches was acceptable. Uh, there's no. No there's rhyme no, or reason. No. You just. Yeah, okay. I mean, yeah. I mean, part of it is there's a, there's a, there's only so much accuracy in the predictive right. process anyway, right? So to think that we're more than two inches accurate in these predictions is probably wishful thinking. And when you say we, who's we? We meaning me and my colleagues at Portland. Okay. And for that, for, for the, to answer that question, the entire scientific community that utilizes these okay, that's tools. That's yeah. need to know. Yeah. Uh, that's all I have at the moment, I need to kind of soak this stuff in. Michael. Yeah. Um, do we have an idea, Paul? Actually, let me back up for a minute here. Because we are also concerned about, say, wetlands, the way we end downstream, and so on, do we know how often this site's going to be used post construction? Since we keep hearing, the access road, access road, access road, because I'm also a little concerned about uh, the effects on, on those uh, environments as well. Would that be his question or? Well, or that, yeah, do, do we know that or is this going to be? So, could you repeat the question, please, sir? Do, do we know how often the, the site's going to be used by, say, uh, trucks? Uh, is yeah, is this once this project is completed, which is probably about a 12-week construction period, mm -hmm. there will be probably one vehicle attending the site every three months. What, every three months? Uh, basically what happens is we have people go in to inspect and or repair anything that comes up. And during the spring and summer, there's some need for some landscape work on the site. But on the whole, uh, you won't see eight vehicles in an entire year visiting that site. All right. Okay, thank you. Carol. No questions. No questions at this time. Nicole. Um, I just have one question. So this two inches of groundwater that you were saying is, in your idea, acceptable. This is for the areas with the neighbors that already have issues with water. So that's an extra two inches on top of that, what they already deal with. Right. And I guess I, I can look at I think I may be overstating the two inches, but um, let me see here. Okay, unfortunately, these numbers in the report are in feet. Um, the maximum is 0.125 feet. Uh, Get it out. <laughs> let's see what that is. Two inches. One, two, five times 12 equals one and a half inches. Under uh, the worst possible condition. 
Right. I have one more question. Yeah. And what conditions would lead to that 1.5? So that that is the that's the 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 steady state change from the land use alterations overall plus the 100 year storm okay. uh, on top of that. And I should add too, there's one of the other reasons that I wasn't getting too concerned over an inch and a half or, or two inches is I don't think we really know. I mean, we're worried about septic systems, right? Like. I don't think any of the plans, maybe not any, but probably most of the plans that we have for the septic systems in that area are, un are unlikely to have elevations accurate to an inch and a half on them. So we don't really know if, w would an inch and a half suddenly make the site, the septic system non-compliant with Title V or not? It would take a lot of effort on each individual property to figure that out. So that's, I mean, I, we were kind of more looking at, is there something big that's gonna happen that will clearly have an effect on these people? And, and this is not something big, this is something small that while, like you say, right, perhaps if someone's right there, if someone's got, if the water's already lapping at their, at their basement, then it will lap a little more. But I mean, that's a, that's a decision for, the, for you and the planning board and others in the town to think about if, is that important or not. It's not really, it's not my, my right. point to, to. Yeah, I was going to ask whether or not we were going to flood all the Title Fives or <laughs> how many are out there are cesspools yeah. that will be flooded. We didn't, we have not, I mean, that's, that would be, a, again, if you were concerned, that would be another step you could do to pull Board of Health records and Just figure that out, but yeah. Now, are there wells or are, is there town water? There is town water available, I believe. Are they all on town water? I don't remember. I can say that Faring Hill is all town water. Outside of that, I'm not actually sure. Because not every, there be, could, could be, wait, wait, no, I don't want an answer yet from, it's possible that even though town water is going by property, they may not be hooked up to town water and be right. using a well. Okay, but has there been any attempt to determine whether or not this will impact those that have wells? I, I can answer conceptually if there were wells rather than mm -hmm. addressing any specific wells. So any change that occurs is it's going to rise, raise okay. the water level up, which theoretically gives, makes, gives the wells more water to work with rather than less. So it should not be a concern for the wells from a quantity standpoint. And I don't believe that this project has a significant water quality impact from the standpoint okay. of drinking water. Though. Now, in today's environment, we are so bone dry. Any heavy rain will cause a tremendous amount of erosion. So once this area is free of trees, what would happen to the meadow, quote unquote, under these solar panels if it hasn't really been Stabilized. Thank you. That's because yeah. right now, if I rain is coming, I'm going out there and I'm going to water my garden. So it will be better to accept the rain. Yeah. Because yeah. if it comes down hard, it's all washed away, and there goes your numbers. Uh, so, I know it's not your concern. My concern yeah. is the creating of these meadows and the stabilizing stabilizing that uh, plantings, and that's another. That's for the other people. Mm -hmm. But well, I, I that is a concern right now, is the erosion of extremely dry soil. I happen to agree that w for this project, the potential for erosion is the most fundamental. Yeah, that's right. a pretty steep hill from 90 yeah. to 55. But that's yeah. why, you know, we, we do all these analyses. We, we try in the design, aren't we? But Atlantic tries in the design to um, uh, deal with that and then you try to construct it so that's why you know it is important monitoring is important and and assurances that these things will be repaired if erosion does occur is important and, and should be part of the conditions of any permit yeah and that erosion will do a job on the three basins yeah okay. yeah everything needs to be managed you can't this it's a you know just because the the modeling shows that you know the the numbers balance out pre versus post, it becomes a managed site. You know, there's all these, all this infrastructure that's now managing it to create that balance. If the infrastructure is not maintained, then, then you lose that. Okay. So, it, yeah. 
Well, thank you. Anything else for Neil? If not, I'd say thank you very much. I and just did have one. No, I'm sorry, quick, you, did, you did say you had yeah, a Yeah, quick question. comment yeah. was, um, I know a lot of work went into the study and, and I understand that, um, but these things are still models. They're not always simulating real-time conditions. And that's my concern because there's been a couple of uh, solar projects that I know of where supposedly well-designed projects ended up causing significant flooding or damage to surrounding properties. Um, so that's always the concern. And, and what I see with any one of these that clear cuts large amounts of forest, because to me that's just not the place to be putting solar projects. I get that that's what people want to do, but I just don't think it's appropriate. Um, so that's one of the things I always have in my mind is even though these things might be designed per se, there's no guarantees that it's going to function the way people think it's <coughs> going to until it's in place. And then you possibly have a big problem to try to deal with after the fact. So that's just a comment, not a question. So no, anyway, and I, I don't disagree with you and I, and I don't envy the, the position that you are in as a board. These are, I mean, again, this is not my role to make these decisions. It's, your, it's yours to right. do so and um, yeah. Thank you, Neil. Thank you very much for You're coming welcome. in. Yeah. I appreciate your time and yeah. your knowledge on the project. It's, you're right. It's not simple. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. My it's pleasure. Yeah, okay. okay. Nick, and, uh, is there anybody here who would like to comment on the project that has not been before us already? Because I, I will, if you've been before us, I will not. There's no reason to repeat what you've already shared with us in the previous meeting. Is there anybody? Other than Annie, do you have something? Unless they have new information. Unless you have something new to add, that you haven't already discussed with us. Okay, come on up. I mean, just think about seven Suzerain Pond on the parched and parcel, the damage that it would do to the environment. Annie Hayes, 52 Fairing. Sorry. <laughs> 52 Farmers Lane. Um, one immediate is that I did the, um, the data on the immediate circle. I may have said that, but I think I've only said that to planning. And this is the um, private well usage. And yes, people got the um, ability to tie up, but they did not want to relinquish their well water for town water. And they did not want to sp spend the money so when I did the, the math, I went first to the Department of Health. They didn't have records except by every individual address, which was overly burdensome. So I went to the town, uh, the, um, the water district, and I got the data on how many hookups there were for public water. And from that, I went to the Mooney map for every street, how many per street for public water tie-end tied in. Um, and from that, I went to Mooney Map, um, current rendition, and I counted the houses on the lots. And I subtracted <clears throat> the 259 houses from the public water hookups, and there were 211 private wells in the immediate neighborhoods. When you see immediate, a mile? Half mile? Oh, less than half mile, maybe. So I have how many, 400 houses within a half mile of this project? Oh, yeah, there are all those little side streets off of Faring Hill. 400 houses within a mile of this project. Oh, yeah. No, no, there are 259 households. Mm -hmm. Okay. 211 of the 259 were wells. We don't add the numbers. It's okay. The, okay. So. <clears throat> Um, I actually called Mr. Price and asked him, I don't know, maybe in February, because I knew right away, we all knew right away that Mr. Swenson saying to him at the interview that there were zero private wells was not right because okay. there's some here. Um, I wanted to read um, what Horsley Witten says when they wrote the um, policy guidance for regulating solar energy systems. That's Does the, that have something to do with, with our conservation? Because I'm not here to talk about the solar panels. I'm here to talk about conservation. Yep. It's about 
what Mr. Um, Bichette said. Um, DOR strongly discourages locations that result in significant loss of land and natural resources, including farm and forest land, and encourages rooftop siting as well as locations in industrial and commercial districts or on vacant, disturbed land. Significant tree cutting is problematic because of the important water management, cooling, and climate benefits trees provide. So what we have here is a situation where we have to manage for water leaving the site after the forest is uprooted, destroyed. There's nothing left. Um, and in the meantime, when Mr. Price says this project has water issues, won't, this won't make them better, it won't make them worse, I have um, strong disagreement because when you remove the forest, you remove the whole hydrological water cycle. You remove the evaporation, the transpiration, you remove the carbon sequestration, the conversion of carbon dioxide to oxygen, the canopy, the habitat. Um, you have zo zoological spread of disease because the animals will wear, go where? They will come over to my farm in the back, but I don't have the high, uh, high bush, blueberry bu um, bushes that cover that hill. And that's what gets a lot of the animals through the winter. Um, it's extremely nourishing. So um, it's, to me, it's totally unnecessary. It's ill-advised, as D um, Horsley Witten says in the DOER. And um, I, um, there's so many reasons why, why that is. But I also did some citizen science today because for the last six months from my records of um, daily temperatures and precipitation, we have been in a, in a drought. And today, um, at 11 o'clock in the morning, the temperature on my shingles outside in the shade, um, and outside my door, said 85 degrees. Okay, Annie, is this coming to a point? Yeah, well, I'm coming to a point. I am, Sandy. I know you like points. Um, at 11.15, on my solar panels on the barn, it was 106 degrees. This is what a meadow looks like compared to a forest. The forest was at 78 degrees on the forest floor. And the open meadow blew me away. It was at 120 degrees. That golden grass was 120 degrees. And then by noon on the rooftop solar, it was 120 degrees and it had gone off. It, it couldn't register anymore. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Is there anybody else like to comment on this project? Yeah, the, um, we got the gentleman. Did you want to respond to her or do you want to have a Joe, did you want to? I'll wait for some Okay. Okay. Please come forward and identify yourself. I would ask that another person with the comments address the notice of intent. I'm trying to get to that. I think I've been trying. I, I appreciate that. Uh, Eric Lintula, 15 Squirrel Island Road. Uh, my property abuts all the people along Fearing Hill Road. Could you spell your last name for me, please? L-I-N-T-A-L-A. -A. Thank you. The hydrogeologic report still shows major concerns in relation to water issues with the Faring Hills Solar Project. <clears throat> major concerns were addressed by Mr. Charles Rowley, the consulting engineer. Uh, Mr. Shanahan has tried to address uh, many of those concerns. Uh, a few things that were brought up tonight that are still major and brought up at the last planning board meeting in relation to this. Runoff is obviously the big issue coming off the panels. Mr. Rowley uh, had mentioned that uh, a monitoring station should have been put in place across the road from Faring Hill along the properties of the people who have major concerns in relation to their wells and septics. That wasn't done. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Shanahan mentions that uh, there'll be basically one vehicle visiting every three months once this is in place. Well, there seems to be a lot of monitoring that needs to take place oh, on this hill. 
conservation. Well, it, 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 it's erosion. Monitoring erosion, one car every three months comes to see well, what the haven't... situation is. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, also, um, uh, Mr. Raleigh brought up the fact that when, for the report, they stop monitoring those wells at a certain point and a certain date. Uh, can we get an exact date when that happened from Mr. Neil Price? Uh, Wait a minute, Neil, you'll have to come up to the mic. We have how many well, how many monitoring si uh, wells were there? Come on, please. Five. Five. Okay. And was there an issue with the fifth one showing it wasn't completed because it didn't show water? Was that the um, yeah the the one of them hit rock? Okay. And there was no water above the rock, rock. for it to okay. Measure. Yeah. All right. And let's see here. The last manual measurement no nope, excuse me hold on changes uh, in february 9th april 18th so from um that was january, probably the, january 12th to april 18th that was probably the last time we had a rainstorm all right feels so that to way. me <laughs> the monitor the wells would not give us a lot of information because there hasn't been any rain in order to well, I, w I will add um, to that. So there's there's another probably fairly confusing aspect in here where we looked. They're called USGS index wells. So the USGS maintains a series of a couple of hundred wells all across the state. You went to was it Lakeville or Middleborough yeah, and did right. a comparison. So again, it's not yeah. perfect, but yeah. we we have <laughs> correlated these two data sets to tap into that longer term okay. record and get a better idea of where our monitoring period fell in the longer term hydro cycle. Does that answer your question as to when they were last looked at? That answers a question. Uh, Mr. Ellie then brought up the question that says, why was not the monitoring well, continued up until that meeting? This is difficult for us since we have not seen anything from Mr. Rowley. So this is okay. hard for us to accept and listen to something we haven't had a chance to read. All right, understandable. Yeah. So maybe you return to our next meeting when we've had a chance to see what Mr. Rowley has written to us. Okay. To the continuance. Thank yes. you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Anything, anything new, please. Thank you, Nancy McHale, Faring Hill Road, number 87. Um, I'm still confused about that one well that was abandoned because it didn't produce water. Um, is it possible for Mr. Price to show us on the plan where that is? So, Mr. Price, what she's asking for is that well that hit rock, where is it located? That's the one you're talking about. There, there was no talking. water in it because, as he said, it hit rock. There might be two. There might, you might be confused. There's, there's that which we just talked about, and there was also an issue monitoring well one we started drilling it and it hit not bedrock but a boulder and too high up uh, so we, we moved over five or ten feet and drilled it again and went down deeper and because we already had the hole there we put plastic in both so there's we're calling it monitoring well one shallow monitoring well one deep so you get an idea of um, you know if there's a difference in shallow and deep groundwater level so there's that might be what you're talking about. No, I'm talking about the... The one that hit rock and didn't have a lot of water in it. Yeah, okay. Let us see. Um, Martin Well 5, dry. Martin Well 5 is... If you, can you point to it on that, that map, please? I don't know if the well is on, on that, this map. Well, just... You get a hint as to north, south, east, west. General, sure. general area. Southeast. Yeah, down, uh, let's see. About where your finger is is southeast. Yeah, it's like maybe, um, Where they pull the panels back. Yeah, somewhere in this area. <coughs> okay, so it's not too far from where basin number three is. Is that correct? That is correct. 
right? Because Basin 3 is in that southeast corner, and that's where that well failed. That came up dry. It, 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 it didn't rock. It, it, it didn't. It didn't register it, water. It, it didn't register water. I would love to have had these wells in a normal rainy season. This is yeah. Right. I mean it. So to me, it doesn't make any sense to put the drainage basin where you know it's not going to drain. But if it hit rock, and there's water running down. It will hit the rock and stay close to the surface, which is why the basin's being placed there. I mean, it's to me, that rock would be that I can't go any further, so I'm going to run along it. I'm going to run along the top of that rock, and which is why they looked at basin three. It's my understanding. It yeah. So I don't want to speak for that. That can, that can correct me if I'm wrong, but the detention basin is not, again, it was not modeled to infiltrate at all. So it's a detention basin it, it's holding the water at the surface rather than trying to I mean it's fine if it infiltrates but that's not the goal and it wasn't modeled as such and the elevation of the bottom of that basin <laughs> significantly higher than where the the rock was hit in MW5 correct yeah okay okay does that um, help you it, it's counterintuitive um, if you're happy with the science that's kind of all that matters. <laughs> I, I believe the scientist, it's awful hard to get, yes. It's, it's, it's hard to wrap your head around it when, when, it's, um, when it doesn't make sense like that. The other question that I have is this, um, Mr. Price's statement that the quantity of water um, is going to be okay, but and the quality of water isn't going to change. So my question is: Have the question of herbicides and pesticides use on these um, meadows been addressed? We will ask the question as to how they are going to seed, maintain the slope, and what they are going to add to the field in the way of pesticides and whatever. We will be asking that question. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. <clears throat> Thank you. Is there anybody happen. else before Mr. Before Joe comes back up? Joe and Nick, you have a chance to respond? Thank you, Madam Chairperson. A couple of points, and I'll try to be brief. Uh, first of all, I think because the NOI has been pending before this commission for so long, I think it's important for you to have some context as to what actually brings Mr. Price before you this evening. Uh, we filed an NOI and we filed with the planning board over a year ago, oh, yep. as you're aware. Mm -hmm. As we went through the process, uh, Charles Rowley, the consulting town engineer, heard the questions and concerns from abutting property owners with regard to the matter of groundwater runoff and the matter of ground mounting water mounting. Mr. Rowley indicated to the planning board, I do not have expertise in these areas. Yep. I do not want to get involved and make recommendations to this planning board on that matter. As a result of his colloquy with the planning board, it was decided that they would like to hire a hydrogeologist to look into the issues that. Mr. Yes. Rowley wasn't qualified to do, and admittedly so. The planning board interviewed firms to do that report. And the point is? May I finish, Madam Chairperson? I've listened to everybody else in front of you. May I take five minutes to respond? All right. Thank you. Planning board interviewed the firms, and they chose Horsley Witten Group. They then brought Horsley Witten Group in and defined the scope of work to be done to address Mr. Rowley and the planning board's concerns. Quite candidly, I'm disappointed that this commission and Mr. Pochette weren't part of that process, but I can't turn back the clock. But anyway, they ended up hiring not a local firm, not a state firm, a world-renowned firm to do the study. You've got the report, you've got Mr. Price's findings before the planning board and before the commission. They are experts 
And with all due respect for Annie Hayes to get up and say, oh, I disagree please, with no them personal, is totally unfair. No personal I'm responding now, to her comment. You, you may say the previous speaker, but not the name, well, Then please. I wouldn't identify which previous speaker then, I was talking about. So uh, with all due respect, I would ask this commission, as I've asked the planning board, to pay due attention to what the experts say. I didn't hire these people to come in and speak on behalf of my project. The town did. And I think they deserve to be listened to and not belittled by people who do not have the qualifications they have. Here again, lastly, no personal attack, please. Lastly, in response to Eric's comment about the traffic, I mentioned the traditional project where there would be vehicular traffic for landscaping, inspections, and repairs. He is correct that there would be a more frequent traffic flow because we are crafting a monitoring program being designed by Horsley Witten that will require weekly visits for inspections and monitoring weekly during construction. Mm -hmm. So obviously there will be additional vehicle trips. I mean, it's not during gonna be Walmart. It'll be inspectors. But after construction. And then after construction, there will be monitoring in accordance with that program. But that may increase those eight vehicle trips a year to 20. Okay. But the so. road is already there. The, the travel road they need in order to inspect will be there. And whether or not it's one per week or four per week, the last it's still point a road. I want to make and it was never intended that it would come out of the hydrogeology and hydraulic report. But we have frequently indicated publicly that the landowner has said, if this project is not built, they're going to go in and propose residential subdivision up there. And the response has always been, but you don't know that you can put subsurface septic systems in, so we don't know that they can build houses. And as a result of the hydrogeology and hydraulic report, we now know that a residential subdivision with subsurface septic systems can be developed at that site. And with all due respect, we all know that that would have a far more impactful effect on that area Thank than that this is project. Not part of our concern here. We are looking for conservation component, whether or not we could have a house there. It's not our, we are focusing on our water and our runoff. I understand. The land. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there, if nothing else, I would like to take a motion to continue this until 817. What are we wanting, Mr. Rowley? We would like to hear from Mr. Rowley. Well, well Mr. Rowley is gonna, important wait on, I'm sure, revised plans before he's going to make a final comment. So Maybe he may 17th. have that by the 17th. He may not. We don't know that. Um, so I would suggest continuing it to the 17th. And then if we have the information, great. If we don't, then we have to continue it again. All right. Motion, motion to continue until August 17th. I have that motion. Second. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero zero. Thank you. See you on the... 817. Thank you. Holy crap. I'm glad I Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. The next we have on the agenda is the extension request from Buzzards Bay Coalition for the Burgess Point sub shrub land habitat. That's been a long time they came before us. Is this? The Burgess Point. Um, so yes, this is um, a project that the Buzzards Bay Coalition had um, submitted and gotten approval to do some wildlife um, habitat improvements at this property off of Burgess Point. And they have done a lot of that work, but their order of conditions is running out and they wish to have the ability to continue to do um, that work and improvement to that site. Um, so I would recommend the issuance of an extension to that order of conditions. Um, the commission can do one to three years, so whatever the preference of the commission is uh, on that. How long ago did they come before us to begin with? 
three years ago. So this has been three years in the works and they're still doing on it. They, they wish to continue to be able to monitor and improve what they've started. And we go one to three years. Does anybody have a preference? I have no problem with the three year extension. I have no problem with three years either. I same here. I move that we issue a extension for three years. <laughs> Is that what you want out of that? That does That's it. it. Yeah. Okay. Second. Need a second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Three years. Okie dokie. Signatures, please. All right. Enforcement orders. Um, we have a, um, a violation that's occurred at 2530 Cranberry Highway, and Mr. Ed Harris is the owner who's here um, tonight. And this activity involved the placement of fill um, and stumps in the buffer zone to wetlands at this property without an order of conditions. Um, I've approached Mr. Harris. He met me at the site. We went over things. Um, and he has agreed to get this situation addressed. He has contracted with an engineering company, Bracken Engineering, and they have actually submitted a notice of intent to address this matter, but it wasn't submitted timely enough for this particular meeting, so this will be on our agenda for our next meeting, but I had asked Mr. Harris to be here um, just to discuss the matter and um, acknowledge that he has somebody trying to get this issue straightened out. Thank you. Um, where is 2530 Cranberry Highway? Uh, it's across from the police station. It's uh, right near where Taylor oh, Rental was. Okay. Yes. And the garden club plantings by the uh, lighthouse. Yes, it's a little bit past that towards uh, towards the Napa, or the March towing that used to be there. It's the land behind the homes um, that are right along Cranberry Highway, so. Oh, where right Jim Unis lives. Yes. Right behind Jim yep. Unis. You know, it helps to be able well, to Well, I didn't know who knew where he lives Jim or not, so I wasn't going to okay. bring his name up. If I see the, if <laughs> I see, no, oh, no clue where Jim, I okay, does what everybody says. know where the lighthouses are? It's in that area. Okay. It's across from the medical buildings. <laughs> okay. Thank you. And you were, you were going to comment on why you did, you did? Uh, well, uh, I bought the property uh, six years ago and I had uh, a surveying team come out. They marked out the, um, all the property lines. I did call Dave back in five years, five years ago from now. Uh, <laughs> And we did like a rough walk through the property and he told me where I could and couldn't be. Um, we did walk uh, towards the 80 make piece cranberry bogs and there's a uh, access road that perimeters the cranberry bogs. Um, and at that time, uh, the land closer to my property was not wet and there wasn't a lot of wet lands or plant vegetation for them. Um, so roughly, Dave and I agreed of where I could and could not be. Um, at that time, I did tell him that I was clearing the property. Uh, I was going to be chipping up everything and disposing of the stumps and the logs. And I specifically did ask if I could add natural material into that buffer zone. And it was at that understanding of mine that it was okay as long as it was a natural material that was not being used to build up the property. Mm -hmm. um, so I did clear the 3,800 square feet um, of property and the stumps and the uh, vegetation and underbrush was uh, put along the 100 foot buffer uh, boundary. Some of it has gone past the 100 foot boundary um, and I have since brought soil in and raised up the property. Um, my purpose of that was to have grass. I live on a main road and I have a kid and I just wanted him to play, so. So we'll be having an NOI at the next meeting? Yes. So any questions? If not, I'll ask for a um, ratification of the enforcement order. 
So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So we'll see you and then when we when you have the notice of intent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next one. Filing fees. I sent Denise off on a mission. hunt at the last <laughs> meeting and she mission. has some information on conservation fees analysis. You want to do, just do a recap and then we can talk about whether or not we want to put a subgroup together to come back with a recommendation? What I do. What I did was um, I went out obviously to different websites and looked into the fees being charged in Wareham, Marion, Carver, Bourne, Rochester, and Mattapoisett. And if you look at the chart that I gave you, they're all listed. Um, I also included the BRP WPA Form 3 fees that the state collects at the times of um, RDAs and NOIs, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, so you have all of the materials in terms of fees that are charged for RDAs, NOIs, uh, and RADs, which are abbreviated notices of resource de delineation. I looked at determination of applicability, certificates of compliance, residential and non-residential and certificates of compliance after seven or 10 year periods, requests for amended order of conditions, uh, extension requests, different categories, legal fees, um, everything that was basically out on the different websites for these different towns. And um, the data is in front of you. Um, I didn't know if you wanted to get together as a group, as a whole, to discuss it and see what we could do in terms of um, adding or up updating the fees that, that are uh, charged in Wareham, or if you wanted to create a subcommittee um, who would put together recommendations. So if I see nothing under the Wareham column, I couldn't either that find anything we or we don't charge a fee for that. that. But Carver likes to seem to charge fee for everything. They do. They have it completely broken down, into, and so does Rochester, into the different categories yep. and Mattapoisett and Warren. They, they all break them down into the different categories broken onto the state um, forms. I <laughs> could not get all the information from Marion because they charge you after you've put your application in, then they let you know what the fees are. So unless I went down and actually asked about everything, I could not get their fees. But I think you've given us Carver, Bourne, Rochester, and Mattapoisett. Uh, yeah, I, uh, all the surrounding areas. Yep. Boy, are we cheap. We are, <laughs> we are, we are in need of, of updating. <laughs> yeah. Just in comparison um, to the towns around us, but uh, I don't know when this was last done. I'm assuming when was, it was last time we looked at fees. I can't remember it. Well, I think it was only done um, initially when when the town got the wetland bylaw in place. Then there was a provision that allowed um, them to incorporate fees. Um, so it's been quite a number of years. Before me, so it was in West, Westgate was around. Yeah, I would say it was John, in that yeah, time frame. Baptiste, it was before me, and I've only been here, what, 15 years? I was going to say, <laughs> I haven't been here very long, neither has Denise and Nicole, so <laughs> <laughs> don't blame me. So either. it is time. What would you like time. to do? I mean, would you want a, do you want a workshop to talk about this? Do you want Denise and somebody else to go off and make I, a recommendation? Mike said he's, and Mike to he's give available us a during the day. I don't I'm available during the day, at least for the next month. Yeah. Well, till the end of the month, I should say. Now. Any comments? Is that? I think that would be a good idea. Yeah. So there you Works go. For you me. have yourself a project. And we'll run everything by you. Dave too. Yeah. Okay. 
Thank you. And what's next? Was that it? That's it. That's it. Said there was some other. I have a quick question. What is the process for a certification of compliance? We have some. Does a form have to be filled out? Yes. Okay, so until the form is filled up, we can't put it on our agenda. Right. And most realtors know that, don't they? Um, some do, some don't. I get calls <laughs> from them and they um, check in with me about the process and um, usually I email them the form if they don't have it or if they're not familiar with it, but okay. um, some of them are aware of it and they just submit the paperwork or ask me if one exists. So if, if it turns out that a certificate of compliance hadn't been issued, then they will start the process. Okay. But yes, there is a form and we need that before we can, in a fee. And, and a so. Fee. And um, I, I think I sent out to everybody about too. this thing at 50 Avenue A, they've been tree cut tree cutting on someone else's property correct and we distinctly asked them who owned that property because some cutting had already been done and brought it to the attention that it should not have been done that's right so if they're continuing to do it and it's not even their yeah. property yeah it's not their property it belongs to Nolan Susan and Jack Nolan who's bringing it to our attention. Of course, I can't find my notes, but we've talked about it already, but yeah. I think 50 Avenue A has been cleared cut to an unbelievable view of the river. So we need- On someone else's property. Does the owner have a sense of who's doing the cutting or who- The email I sent from uh, Susan Nolan indicated that the owner of the property, of the owner of the house on 50 Avenue A said his half brother cleared it. Okay. But Susan Nolan, they don't own the land. They thought it was the homeowner, homeowner thought it was conservation land and therefore it could be cut. <laughs> okay. But that's, that's second hand, so, uh, only as a note. I don't, haven't talked to the homeowner at 50 Avenue A. And we need restoration and we need or fines. There will be, yes, there will be a full restoration. Can I ask one more yes, question on COCs? How big of a deal is it to go back a number of years to, because I mean, <laughs> some of these towns, if you go back seven years, they're charging you more money if you go back 10 years. Yeah, I don't understand why they would do such a thing. It, you're not really doing anything a whole lot different, whether it's a that's recent one or an old one. So I don't understand what that's all that's about, but I to, uh, I to that's know. the first I've seen of that sort of a thing. So I'd like to look at that myself and find out yeah. why. Yeah, okay. And lastly, we have Jessica Parr in the field. Would you like to come up and introduce yourself? Because we have your application as a request to become part of conservation. So. I'd like you to introduce yourself and tell us, other than you're a garden club member. Hi, I'm a garden club member and um, a real estate attorney. And I live here in Wareham on Great Neck Road and um, have enjoyed observing the meetings and so uh, interested in seeing what I can do to support the committee and, uh, and the town. Thank you. I know you've been on one or two zoom meetings and then you've been off on seminars and yeah. traveling etc cetera, etc cetera. so i know it's been a while since you received her application when was it um early may so i'm sure you've all forgotten that you had it nope I but remember. if you have any I, questions, I, but. <laughs> I assumed she abandoned us. <laughs> I, you know, I haven't. I just I book out during my uh, during the summertime. I do a lot of client visits, and so that's often out of state. And I've had conferences, and so I can manage my schedule better moving forward. It's just those things were already in place. In place. So. Well, I'm glad you didn't abandon us. <laughs> yeah. No, definitely yeah, not. I, I thought, I she thought ran we scared away. you I off. We <laughs> No, certainly not. <laughs> to give you a hint, mm -hmm. she did a project, was it last year or the last, last year or two years ago, you went out to what island off of Woods Hole? Penakees Island. Penakee Island and did plantings. That's right, we that, did a teaching garden at the Penakees Island School. That's an idea of where she is with her conservation yeah. and landscaping, et cetera, et cetera. Do you um, have any questions for us? I You've don't. seen us in a lengthy meeting. 
it's not uncommon to go three hours, if not more. No, it's, uh, I, don't, I don't have any questions. I think that if it was, uh, if you would consider me to participate, that I would hope that you'd be able to provide me with some more information and some learning tools so that I could do a really good job. No, definitely that's all part of when anybody new comes on board to get that introduction and information, certainly. We do have an opening for full time, but we do ask people to come on as an associate for about two months, four to six meetings before we, if you feel comfortable moving up to a voting member, but as an associate, you may be part of the conversation, but not part of the vote. Yeah, great. Anything else? Ooh, Glad you came out. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I was so much. pleased to see you come. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Not, nice meeting you. I can't think of anything else on the agenda, folks. Uh, move to adjourn I think there was the somebody. Oh, you got a wait. question. Oh, okay. a couple people. Yes. And I think it was her, but somebody else. But anyway. Kathy Papalardo, I have a quick question. What happened to all the trees downtown by the water and the railroad? They're gone. Yes. Yes. Did you guys know that was going to happen? No. <laughs> okay. Yes. I was just Merchants, wondering. Merchants Way has been cleared. Yes. Yeah. I believe it has something to do with the railroad. I was wondering. It was kind of shocking to, like, whoa. I mean, it's a beautiful waterfront. Don't but get me wrong. Honest, but it's, maybe I'm, it, the railroad has the ability to clear their land, correct? Without uh, our permission, it's a standing... They, they do have the ability to uh, maintain their rights of way, let's put it that way. I haven't had a chance to find out about this scenario because it's obviously something new and I just got back. I haven't been here. So I did want to... I haven't even seen it, honestly. Wait, but I have to go it. take a look. <laughs> they kept a few trees. Normally we ask if they give us the courtesy of telling us they're coming in to clear but I don't remember hearing anything. I don't well, Hopefully it was them and not some whatever. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. Anything else? Oh, folks. Anybody else? It's 821. Someone make some, someone? Who's close to hearing? Second. second. I have a motion to adjourn <laughs> at 821. I heard a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero zero. Thank you very much. Thank you.